It's Tyler Wyman. Dude, what's, what's up? up, dude? How you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Good. Welcome to the podcast. Dude, yes, let's go. Dude, I'm a big fan of your work. Heck yeah. I was looking at it and like, I just admire your photos, bro, because there's something about them that like, I don't know that they, they're just admirable. Like, yeah. Like old school, timey. Yeah. Everything I think like that's, that. that's kind of what I hear most often. It's funny or it's cool that for me to hear that stuff because for me, it's like, that's just like it's just what i make like yeah. i don't think i like i'm not like following like a like a checklist i guess mm. of like i have to hit this aesthetic but I have like to hit this style. those compliments are like an affirmation of like what you're looking for yeah totally yeah. for sure and like it's like i mean i don't like do it for validation from other people mm. but it is it is really nice to yeah. hear that and like um like i was just telling you earlier like i love this like the kind of the vintage kind of aesthetic mm -hmm. anyways and so i think that just comes out naturally. What, what is the vintage aesthetic like can you explain that i don't even know if i can it's hard it's, <laughs> yeah i mean it's the same you're saying about my photos like it's hard to ex put them in the category you know sure. um but because i guess you were talking about that you get these ideas are inspired by like old school like a, maybe like a james bond or like yeah stuff like that. yeah so um definitely movies like the james bond mm -hmm. movies um like the talented mr ripley or something yeah um and then i'm just on like i'm on pinterest a lot too and you know music i listen to music a lot mm -hmm. um what where do you think uh like why do you think this vintage look is like coming into like play? Like, I guess all of a sudden, like people are into film. Yeah. Uh, I guess a lot of photographers, including yourself. Yeah. And I don't know, just a lot of old school. What did you call it? Uh, old money. Look. Old money. Aesthetic. Yeah. 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 Old money aesthetic. Yeah. Um, Which is like villa vibes, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's like, a, I don't know, like a 1960s, like preppy kind mm. of um i don't really know much about 1960s like i i, I know a little bit of the, about the 20s from learn, uh, reading yeah. some history about like alcohol and stuff but like what was the 60s like like from what you know um i mean it, first of all like just saying the 60s that was kind of a general thing oh, okay. like, <laughs> it's, it, it's like um dude i don't know it's so what i like is like it's so there's this photographer so i guess this is kind of where um, a lot of my inspiration comes from his name is slim Aaron's slim Aaron's. Yeah. Okay. So he was, uh, so he was a world war II photographer. Mm. So after the war, he came home and what he did was he photographed, he's a, he's American too. And mm -hmm. he photographed, um, basically rich people doing expensive things. If that makes sense, rich people doing expensive things like, so give me an he, example. What he, what he called it is, um, attractive people doing attractive things. Okay. So he, um, I like that. He'd follow the celebrities around and okay. they go like, he'd follow them to, you know, Capri Italy or something. And, and like all their, he'd take photos of their pool parties. And like, um, it's just, it like, he has such a lot. He, it's his lifestyle or he captured their lifestyle of these rich people. Sure. Um, of going to, you know, Italy and Europe and mm -hmm. stuff, have these vacations in Europe. Yeah. Um, and then like, you know, models and, and extremely nice places and yeah. stuff. So it's, there's also something about Europe that's kind of like magical, romantic yeah, and magical. And I think it's, um, I think it's really only romantic and magical to Americans. I feel like, mm, really? Yeah. Because I've, I've taken photos with, um, a few models from Europe and they're like, I don't get the whole, like, why is everyone's obsessed with Europe? Like, everyone, really? Yeah. And mm. like, they're like, everyone I, wants to go to Europe for summer. And for me, like, I don't get it. Like, that's I think it's cause it's home. old. I, yeah. Cause like for sure. the one thing that I experienced when I just came back was yeah. like, uh, these buildings yeah. are beautiful yet. They're ancient Yeah, and they're like standing, but and I don't know, you don't see red bricks and like no. stuff in LA yeah. or in the United States in general, everything's so like square -y. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, they're, I think their lifestyle preserves that too. Like, How so? When, like I went there, like I said, I went there in 2018 for a bike race. I spent the week there. Yeah. And the, just like the vibe and the feeling I got from being there was so relaxed yeah. and so laid back. Yeah, it's the food thing too. Like they yeah. spend like five hours eating a meal, and I'm like, bro, I yeah. got shit to do, man. I got shit <laughs> Dude, to do. That's how I am a slow eater. 
Dude, that's a what? That's how I am. I'm a slow eater. A slow eater? Yeah. But I, like, I definitely vibe with them. I, I vibe with it, but like, <laughs> they would have a cappuccino with a cigarette in the morning and yeah. then like chill for like two hours and then start their day Dude, at like 11 a.m. Okay. So that's the aesthetic <laughs> that I'm trying to explain to you. <laughs> that's the vibe. That vibe. Yeah, okay. that's what I'm trying to capture in like yeah. my photos. Yeah. And that's why I have like, uh-huh. like people try, like I try to have people do things in my photos too. Okay. So like, if you see like all of them like reading a magazine or mm-hmm. something and like, I'm not a huge fan of just like super posy, artificial kind of stuff. Sure. So that's like, and like the, the fact that it's shot in film too adds mm-hmm. to that too. Yeah. But that's still what like, like Slim Aaron's does. Like, does. Like, um, like his photos are people mm-hmm. drinking coffee and smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And like, in a Ital- little Italian cafe. Yeah. And it just it just transports you like looking at that. Yeah. Moment, to like know? an older time. Yeah. It's but just, dude, why do you think? Because I find like smoking photos yeah. so dope. They're sick. And I'm just like, why is it so dope? Like that's, know, that's not exactly. good for you. Bro. I know, right? <laughs> like this is this is what I think. I mean, even you just said like I don't know how to explain like your photos. Yeah. And like it, that's the same reason. Yeah. Like, you don't know why it looks cool, but it does. Yeah. And um. And like it, like people know that smoking is bad. Oh yeah, for but sure. But also they are like, yo, su- that's <laughs> that's sick. Yeah. Like I mean, um, so basically back to your, uh, I guess the old money like yeah. vintage vibe. Like for me growing up, I grew, I played like golf. Yeah. Right. And you, you did biking. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. And uh, for me, I saw all these like successful guys, and what did they do? They smoked cigars yeah. and they drank whiskey. Yeah. And so like I just romanticized over yeah. it, and now I smoke cigars and I drink whiskey. Yeah. You know? yeah, pretty much. I know it's bad for me, but yeah. I still do. It. Totally. Like that's, <laughs> like that's it. You don't know why. Yeah. You do you it. Just do it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're just like, oh, that's sick. Yeah. How do you, I guess, like direct like a models to do these things because, um, the shots are captured very artistically. Yeah. And um, even though they might, because I saw a lot of your photos, a lot of the girls are in like bikinis and yeah. stuff like that. But it's not necessarily ne- not necessarily like super sexualized. Yeah. It's very like artistic. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, and how do you like get it from that? Because it's a fine line. It is. Yeah, it's a fine line. Um, I think for me, it's just honestly just practice. Yeah. Um, like most of these, the girls I work with are professional models Mm -hmm. and like I'm a professional photographer. So like it's what we do. Yeah. Um, but a lot of my photos like have like rely on the, I guess the interaction I have with the model, the connection I have. Mm. So what do you mean by that? So like, um, like if I don't like click with the model, Mm -hmm. so like I have to like get along with them and like, Mm -hmm. it's, if I, if, if like if I don't enjoy spending time with you, it's gonna be hard to mm-hmm. photograph you. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I've had like a few models where like I don't click that well with, mm-hmm. and so the photos are kind of decent. But like if I really get along with someone, because it's basically like it's the way I do my shoots. It's not. Um, it doesn't feel forced. Yeah, it doesn't feel forced, but it doesn't feel like corporate if that makes any sense mm, i don't so, know what you mean by corporate so the relationship isn't necessarily that i try and have on my on my photo shoots isn't like i'm the photographer you're the client mm-hmm. the, the relationship i try and, and have is two friends hanging out taking photos mm-hmm. so you know when i meet when i meet them all like we just like get to know each other and we, we're just hanging out really yeah and taking photos so it's not like okay like stop talking stand there hold this <laughs> pose do this you know it's just like yeah i'm literally like Hey, like, do you want to go, like, stand over there? And, like, I'm like, yeah. And so they'll just go over there, and then, like, I'll just, like, be looking through the camera. And I'm just, like, I'm like, I'll just, like, move around or something. And, like, I'll take photos. And, like, Mm -hmm. oh, wait, you know what would be sick? Like, you know, lay down, like, grab this magazine or something. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, just read it. And, like, I'll walk around and, like, like, you'll find, like, the shot. Yeah. Like, did you take photos? I'm like, yeah, I took, like, five right there. Let's move on. Okay. (laughs) How do you distinguish, like, when to take a shot? Because you have a you have a i guess like cap because you do film right yeah so like what is it 30 shots each roll is 36 photos each roll is 36 photos versus like a digital camera camera you could just snap away yeah with digital you can just spray and pray yeah so like when you have that limit do you are you more thoughtful about each click yes okay i'm saying and like that's where 
developing your eye and just mm. having a natural eye yeah helps can you explain to the people who don't know like what is film and then what is digital yeah so um i shoot 35 millimeter film which okay. is you know the the standard for photography before the digital age mm. um and so what it is is it's it's a canister with a roll of photos of light sensitive it's not really paper. It's like plastic material, but it's yeah. light sense of material. And you have 36 boxes on that. Yeah. And so before it's, have, it, before it's exposed, right? The light can like damage the whole for thing. For sure. Okay. So it's, it's hidden inside this little light sense of canister. And then you put it in the camera and then you close the camera up. And then the camera itself is light sensitive. Yeah. So then you can freely open it up and like you pull the film across mm-hmm. and then your shutter is quickly exposing it to what's outside and that's projecting the image onto the slight sensitive material and then once you're done you load it back up and you rewind it back into the film canister mm-hmm. and then you get developed so it's it's like so film photography is like i think it's more of an art form because you are physically capturing and, and physically freezing a moment that was in front of you on a piece of paper on a piece on of paper the plastic or yes. what the film yeah it's yeah. all physical so we're digital like a digital photo is it's a sensor that interprets the photo that's in front of you and mm-hmm. inter- it basically translates it into zeros and ones mm-hmm. into a file yeah. so for me it onto an sd card right yeah yeah so it just kind of lacks character to me sure so where like like film like it's it's more of a process, but it's more of an artistic. Is process. film still like a thing? Do they still make film cameras? Yeah, they do. Is well, it... no, they. As far as I know, they don't make film cameras anymore. Because I was about to say, like, all these cameras are f- like older. Yeah. Right. So I have three. I have um, my grandfather's camera, which is which is pretty cool. You're shooting with your grandfather's yeah, camera. So, that is so cool, dude. Yeah. So it's an old Minolta. Um, How do you say it? Minolta. Minolta. Yeah, okay. Minolta SRT 101. And it's still good in shape and everything. Yeah, dude, they are. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like the materials are different, dude. Like especially with like anything, like cars, yeah. like cameras. Like yeah. back then, those it was like made of like I don't, I don't want to like offend anyone, but like some real old heavy material. Yeah, yeah, like made by hand. Too. Yeah. So like I have, so that's one of the cameras I have, and I have um. I have a modern, a more modern film camera mm-hmm. too by Canon. And okay. it, was, it was made in like 2007. Like they stopped production um, with these, like this model camera in 2007. Sure. So it's electronic. So it like, it's basically a modern uh, digital body that shoots film. Okay. And so that, that just helps with workflow and stuff. It like faster. Yeah. So okay. I literally like, so with the old cameras like the Minolta, it's all, it's fully manual. So you yeah. put the film in. Then you have to like you drag it across the film across, close sure. it back, and then you have to you have to crank. Oh, like you open up the whole thing. Yeah. For, you, oh you, wow. You crank the shutter and stuff, and then you have to rewind it yeah. with a little spool with like the and then with the electronic one that I have, it's uh, it pretty much does it all for you. You put the film in, and then yeah, it it, it, it auto, it for you. Yeah, it auto like advances, that. auto okay. loads. So it takes like it takes like a little bit mm-hmm. of the magic out but sure you're still shooting film and it's still the same creative process yeah. and for work environments like it's a little bit like nicer yeah just because like you don't need to think about as much right you could yeah, think and, more about the for creative me, process it's more consistent results too mm-hmm. so like with the old tech or the old camera like yeah. i've had a what's hand- the benefit to just shooting from the old camera uh, personal enjoyment okay um, so, so, yeah. i've had a few times because like they're quirky too so yeah. i've had a few times where like i, I lose frames in the image because sure who knows light gets in somehow yeah um and like like if you don't fully advance the lever all the way like if yeah. you can cause problems where the shutter doesn't sure activate um it's but it's also you get more of like a hands-on relationship with it i feel like you probably get so satisfied too when like it comes out the way you want it to and it's like this old piece of like i don't know like an old camera yeah that you're like wow i made something out of this thing that's been around longer than i have yeah it's literally like for me it's the same for car guys where it's the difference between driving an old stick car versus like a tesla Mm -hmm. so that's 
the same feeling that like car people get with that is the Ooh. same feeling I get with film. That's a good and analogy. Digital. I yeah. love driving stick. Yeah. I love it. Even though it might not be faster than a lot of cars yeah. these days, but, like yeah. it makes it feel like you're doing something. Exactly. That's a good analogy. You feel connected to the car. Yeah. With these old cameras, I feel connected to it. Wow. With like a digital camera. That's I'm beautiful. Just, I'm just pushing the button. How did you get into photography? I guess we'll start off over there. Yeah. Um. So, um, I I feel like I just kind of have to go into everything. Yeah. Go ahead. Full backstory. Go ahead, so, dude. <laughs> um. Yeah. I grew up racing motocross. Yeah. So. I uh, started racing that at seven years old. Um, took that to the highest level. How did you get into uh, motocross then? So my dad is a sports chiropractor. Okay. And so he and he mainly deals with extreme sports. Okay. So he was being a doctor for supercrosses, X, X Games, Supercross. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So he was involved in that world. So I kind of naturally got involved with that world. Yeah. And then, um, like, I got like a first motorcycle at six years old. But even before, I was riding bikes. So mm -hmm. like. Like riding bikes without train wheels, like three years old and mm. stuff. So like that's crazy because there's a lot of people who like learn how to ride bikes like later in life yeah. or like 15, 16, or like 10, 12, yeah. and you're over here riding at three. <laughs> yeah, literally. That's crazy. Um, what's crazy is even for motocross, there's an age category for four to six year olds, six, six mm. years old, which is gnarly. That's ironic. I mean, that's crazy though. Like I feel like for parents and stuff, like. It is dangerous. Like you mm -hmm. can fall, you can break legs. Like why do you yeah. think uh, your dad put you in so early, or why do you think most parents or a lot of parents put their kids in these extreme sports so young, even though they know there's a high percentage that their kid gets hurt? Yeah, um, it's just it's something within them. I think they love, they have a passion, mm -hmm. or they maybe they weren't able to do the sport themselves, mm -hmm. and they want to see it lived out through their their kids kids sure. um but i mean honestly like my parents were just like they never told me no with the extreme sports or like if you want to do this like like we'll support you sure um and like they i i don't know like they they also like my it could be the way they were raised too like they also they had like hard parents too i feel like mm -hmm. um and so they didn't they wanted me to be tough, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so when they got me like a motorcycle, like I guess like, I wanted a motorcycle at, like age six or something. And they got me one, and then like, they're, like you fall down, you gotta get back up, and like you break your bones, like that's what happens. Like deal with it. Dang. And so that's just how I was raised. And then like I was, I mean, I started breaking bones at um, I went, I mean, I went to kindergarten in a wheelchair, the broken leg. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. So um, and like for them, it was just like. Mm -hmm. they were never like okay that's enough they're like yeah. they're like oh, you fall down and get back up kind of heal up keep going exactly yeah that's what's up and so and i'm like so grateful for that because it's like developed my character so nicely and it's um you know so good so good for me and like it's built like building blocks for my future and stuff to be sure just like just my character i feel like yeah what has i guess like motocross and mountain biking like taught you just in general I mean, for the most part, work ethic and yeah. just toughness, like physical toughness and mental toughness too. Like, yeah. you to compete at the highest, you have to be able to fall down seven times, get back eight. You know? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, your pain tolerance is probably so high, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a nice benefit to it. I the last the last bone I broke was uh, my hand in 2020. Yeah. And um, hit a tree, broke it in half. Like completely and kept riding. It got to bottom of the trail. I was like, ah, something's up here. Like yeah. something's not right. Went to the X-ray and like the X-ray just showed the bone, just like yeah. completely broken in half. Yeah. And so got. But like the whole time was just like, yeah, this is. That's like, normal though. Like for yeah. like a lot of people in extreme sports. Yeah. And they kind of just like walk it off. Yeah. And it just blows my mind. Like uh, <laughs> one of my friends who did. Uh, we were talking about him like doing motocross and mountain biking. His one of his biggest role models ever was Evil Knievel. Yeah. And like the dude broke like every bone in his yeah. body and just kept going. <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, like that, that's who I want to be." I'm like, yeah. "Is it? <laughs> yeah. like, are you sure?" I mean, yeah, that's a little extreme. Yeah. But I mean, for me, being in that world of motocross and then mm -hmm. professional mountain bike racing, like you don't, 
you don't think about that stuff. Yeah. You don't think about the wrist or breaking bones. Like if it happens, it happens. So what's the feeling like when you're going down like these big, I guess, like slopes yeah. and like, I don't know, catching some like a mega air because I'm asking from a person who's never been able to experience that yeah. or not never able to never have. Yeah, sure. You know, like, what's that feeling like? Can you describe it in a way that's, uh, I don't know, because you probably get some joy and fulfillment out of it. For sure, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with adrenaline, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, honestly, for me, like, it's just normal. Like, it's fun. Like, that's it. it's hard to explain. Like, yeah. I've been, but I've also been doing it for so long, you know? Sure. So. But to a normal human, bro, like, you <laughs> going down to this massive hill where there's trees and then yeah. slopes and there's a good chance that you might fall or, like, all these things or, like, do this jump that's, like, 15, 20 feet in the air. Yeah. Like, people think you're crazy, yeah. like, to a normal person. Yeah, I mean, but I also think, like, you know, running back to the NFL are crazy, running against these huge-ass dudes that are trying to kill them. <laughs> Touche. But, sure. So, so <laughs> I get it's... It. Like it's just fun. Like it's the feeling, um, it's the feeling of the bike underneath you and like the dirt underneath you and stuff and just mm. and you know execu- executing a line perfectly. Like you mm-hmm. just there's no other rock hard and you just like flew through it like perfectly. Yeah, you're like that was sick. Do you like envision the line like if you're looking down a hill and like do you do you see, I guess like the path that you want to go yeah. and then you that then you take that path. It's it's honestly the same with photography. You just have like. Like, I don't, like, when I'm taking photos, like, you just have to see it. Mm-hmm. It's the same with cycling or biking or mm. motocross or whatever, you know. You yeah. just, you see what line you should be taking and yeah. you take it. And it's not, you mm. don't think about it. It's just you instinctive. Just do. Yeah, it's all instinct. Okay. So, so is that cycling, it, mountain biking, it's all reaction and instinct. So, how does that, obviously, you just parallel it with photography, but yeah. how did mountain biking and, uh, uh, what's it called? Motocross? Yeah. Uh, get you into photography? So, it I, it's honestly COVID, the pandemic, really. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, with motocross, I did that up until like eighth grade, ninth grade. So okay. with motocross, I was at the highest level. So mm. I was racing, you know, across the country, racing amateur nationals in okay. Tennessee every year. Yeah. Um, and then. Did that take a lot of time away from school? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, like my whole. I mean, from I started when I was seven years old, so I was getting pulled out of class early, pulled out of school early. Yeah. Um, I didn't have play dates with friends. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, yeah. like, you probably didn't have like much of like a social, a social no. childhood. It was and like. So yeah. I grew up here in Thousand Oaks, and the closest track is two hours away. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's pretty far. Yeah. So I get out of, um, I get out of third grade, you know, at three o'clock. Yeah. Drive two hours to a track, train till, I mean, get there like five, train till eight. Um, to come home, do homework on the car ride home, get home at like 11 and then wake up, go to school. Do it again. Day, do it again. And then, um, I mean, oftentimes I get pulled out of school early too. Yeah. Um, did you ever not like it? Yeah. Um, so I feel like I did it so early that it was just like, for me, it was just, it was just what I did. Yeah. Like it wasn't like, Oh, I hate this. I, I can, I don't want to do this anymore. I can stop. You know, it was just like, this is what I do. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I hated the driving for sure. Yeah. But once I got there and was out on the track, like I was loving it. You're like, this is this is what this is worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So like I like I've told my parents that too. Like I love riding, I love competing, but I hate driving to these places. Yeah. But I still want like I still wanted that normal life too. Yeah. So it was always like a constant battle. I feel like. Like inner battle. Yeah. Yeah. Like an inner battle of like oh, I just want to be normal. Yeah. You know, but then like. Oh wait, this is sick though that I'm doing this. Yeah, um, because there's so many people who were those normal kids who just went to class every day and didn't get to experience like yeah. the life that you did. Yeah, and then now you have this cool story, and now exactly. it's probably like worth it. Like for now, for sure, hundred percent. Because yeah, like I everyone wants to be like day. everyone wants to be like the cool kid who's like yeah. popular at school and yeah. like doing the cool kid things. <laughs> yeah. And then like now, like you look back at it and you're like, oh no, I was the cool kid. Yeah, <laughs> and now I, yeah. It's funny, at the time, I was like, I just want to be normal, I just want to be everyone else, and now I'm like, screw that, I don't yeah. want to be like everyone else. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm glad I did that. Yeah, that's one thing I like about LA, I think it's like just a ton of misfits trying to For do sure. cool things, Yeah. and then those cool things end up, like, 
not being weird anymore. Yeah. And they're looked and romanticized as yeah. where there's like a lot of people in professionals, offices and like normal jobs, quote unquote. They're like, yo, I wish I could be like do motocross or photography yeah. and all these things. Yeah, you know? I know. I feel like I fit in finally. I know. I'm like, bro, I've been like this the whole time. I know. It's like you find your tribe. Like that's yeah. what, like I, I moved out here probably like six years ago. And I just never felt like I fit in anywhere. Yeah. And I found, I finally found a place that like, oh, wow, like people like doing the things that I like yeah. to do. Yeah, right? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, shoot, I, I've always felt like I never really fit in. Mm. Um, but then even with photography too, when I first started and like people are like, what are you doing? Like, it's so weird. Like, oh, you totally think Really? You're like, oh, yeah. hundred percent. And now I'm like. How long, how many years ago was that? Um, so I started, I took my first photo class in high school. Okay. So like probably 2015. Okay. Um, it was the easy class of high school, so I didn't care about photography. Sure. And then, um, like my senior year, I took another, I took a film photography class at high school. We mm. had a dark room. Just yeah. sick. Um, and like, even then it was, it was a fun class. Yeah. But then even like, I'd still like go out, um, and take photos, like, just for fun, like once or twice a year or something. Oh, that's it? Yeah. What would you take? Um, Like, I remember this one time I went to the beach with my friend and like he was in a photo class too. Mm -hmm. I think it was probably for home, like a homework assignment or something. Sure. Um, and we just like, we took some long exposure photos of like the cars driving on PCA. Get some blur. Yeah. Get some blur in there. Yeah. And we're like, this is sick. <laughs> and then I think I like, I think I posted on my Instagram too or something. And like yeah. all my classmates the next day are like, what the hell are you doing? Like, oh just, yeah. Like, well, here's Tyler taking photos. Yeah. And like, but yeah. And then it's funny. I and mean, for a while, like old Tyler's taking photos again. Like, mm -hmm. what's he doing? Like, also people don't appreciate what they don't know. Yeah. Like. I, for example, like I d didn't know anything about baseball until my friends like explained it to me, yeah. like because they played baseball growing up, and I'm just like, yo, this is a ridiculous sport. Yeah. Like you're just sitting out there in the field, you're not doing anything, yeah. right? But then you t then they explain like the varieties of pitches, like yeah. how hard it is to actually hit the ball and all yeah. these things. And you're like, wow, like you romanticize it. Yeah. Versus like, um, so my one of my personal training clients, he did uh, astrophotography. So okay. he, he does like a huge telescope, yeah. all these things, and long exposure stuff. But then you see like the movements in the sky yeah. and you explain the science behind the camera yeah. and everything like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is dope. Yeah. And so like all these classmates, they probably just didn't understand what photography was. Yeah. They didn't understand like how hard it is to capture that actual like car in the front, but you see the blur in the back. Yeah. Or they know? don't see the, I guess the enjoyment you get out of it. Sure. They just see the end result. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's funny cause I got that a lot. And then now people are like, Oh damn, dude, like your stuff is sick. <laughs> I'm like, I've been, I've been here the whole time. I've been doing it this whole time. <laughs> yeah. How do you, uh, I guess like, how did you keep going or how did you keep just like practicing like your art or your work or just all that stuff with like, uh, I guess with that, not criticism necessarily, but like those type of comments and those things. I think I just naturally don't care what people think. Really? Yeah. Like, um, I mean, it's probably, it's probably comes from my childhood too. Cause mm -hmm. I got made fun of a lot mm -hmm. at like elementary and middle sure. school and stuff just cause I was different. I was mm. leaving. I was doing some weird sport. Yeah. Um, and you know, just I feel like it just kind of became numb to yeah. me eventually. Yeah. Um, it's hard to not care what people think, though, because like, yeah. uh, those. I don't know. Everyone wants to be f looked at as cool yeah. or a good guy yeah. or like doing something like you don't want to be like oh you're an asshole or you're boring or like all those things like those don't feel good like just yeah. like human instinct yeah totally yeah um yeah like i i i just didn't i like i, I still just don't really care what people think i love that yeah so i just if like i feel like there's a i feel like it's good to be selfish like to a point mm. obviously selfish in what way so like to me, um, I guess like I care, like I'm doing photography for me. Mm -hmm. It makes me happy. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's great that it makes other people happy, mm -hmm. but that's not why I'm doing it. At the end of the day, it's for you. Exactly. Sure. And so even with cycling stuff too, like, um, I got into it cause I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I wasn't necessarily doing it for other people. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, um, sure. 
But yeah, like I, I, cause there's a lot of people like, even with like having conversations with, with models too. Cause mm-hmm. like where I am, like you get rejected a lot. Um, you get people not responding to you with brands, not responding mm. to you, whatever. Um, you send a model, a photo or the photos you got from the photo shoot. And maybe they, sometimes they just don't say anything. Yeah. And you're like, do you even, you like them? Like, <laughs> say up? something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. And like, I've had conversations with models and we're like, a photographer, photographer will send them the photos and they're texting like, do you like it? Do you like yeah. it? Like, is everything okay? Sure. And I'm just like, dude, like have some self-confidence. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Like if I, and for me, like if I send someone, like if I know a photo is good, like that's, that's all, all I need really. Yeah. So like some people are like, oh, I don't know if this is good. Do you like him? Tell me it's good. Like, I don't need anyone to tell me. It's just, good. you're just like, yo, if you love it, like that's it. That's, there it is. Yeah. Like that's yeah. the, that's affirmation. Exactly. Like if I love it, Where's the, great. where's the bridge between the cycling and the photography still? We're still searching for yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. So, um. <laughs> yeah with motocross uh, right around like my eighth grade ninth grade year um, okay. if you want to continue with motocross at the level i was at i couldn't i had to be homeschooled like like at the at that point you couldn't do school and train sure. for motocross so i was like i was a little burnt out on racing and stuff mm-hmm. so i was like i want to go to high school like i want i want that high school experience and i'm glad i did because i feel like high school is a great time for so you saw motocross eighth grade yeah okay so i raced a little bit my freshman year but it was severely backed off yeah um and i i just feel like in general like that high school going to high school is so good for like a person's development as, mm. a, as a person yeah and character development and stuff yeah so i'm glad i did that but um in what way just just social skills really social skills because with the mud across lifestyle like you all you do is go to the track and then you go back to home and sleep and then yeah. you go train and then you you travel so you don't like and then seeing and you don't go to school either. Like they say homeschool, but they don't no one homeschools. So like even seeing guys I used to race with now, they're just like they're like so weird in public. <laughs> like it's yeah. funny. It's it's weird that like they're, um, just, they're just so living or they're so disconnected from the outside world. Yeah. And like not saying you have to be like in the know of everything, yeah. but there's just some basic like human interaction skills that you get. Yeah. That you lose. From yeah. just being so secluded. Or just, like, learn in high school. Because, like, in high school, like, everyone has a big ego. They're trying to yeah. do their thing. Uh, you experience heartbreak for the first time, probably. Yeah. Like, yeah. like all these life things are so important in high school, yeah. you know, that you probably can't really learn anywhere else. Yeah. Because there's just a ton of people going through puberty, like, <laughs> experiencing life and yeah. trying to figure it out together. Yeah, And, exactly. like, you kind of don't get that anywhere else. No, really. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah so anyway yeah go back to it <laughs> so uh yeah I, I went into high school and like i was like all right well shit now what do i do yeah um and like i joined the cross team mm-hmm. um did that for a little bit and then another was, dangerous sport yeah <laughs> and then um there was a my high school newbury park high school had a mountain bike team okay and like i did a little bit of mountain biking to cross chain for motocross mm-hmm. but i hated it why um i don't know my dad always made me go ride with them okay. <laughs> i just didn't like it for some reason yeah um and then so i i was like my parents made me join it too and so i joined it and i ended up becoming friends with the kids on the team mm. and then that just opened up a whole new world like i enjoyed like just goofing off with them and going yeah. on rides with them and they really made it like enjoyable for me just mm-hmm. having friends to ride bikes with and we all got, we all, none of us had previous experience. Like, obviously, I had motocross and, like, just two-wheeled experience in general. But none of us have really put time into mountain biking before. No one from the, like, club or anything? No. Oh, really? So, I mean, so there's a group of, like, four or five um, kids that were on it the year before. Mm-hmm. And then, but everyone from my year, all the freshmen that I was, that I joined with, we all were starting at the same time. Okay. So we're all discovering the sport together and we're all getting stoked together mm-hmm. and we're all developing this passion together. And we all just like click so well. And I'm still like best friends with all of them today. Oh, that's awesome. And so like, it was just, it was just perfect. Yeah. And then, um, so we were just having fun and then we got to our first race and I think I got like, third place or something in the race okay and so I and that just, was the first race yeah and so okay. it was just one of those things where like that's pretty good right yeah okay <laughs> it was just one of those things where like oh i'm actually good at this yeah and then so we, 
like, like it just continued throughout high school and then um I got into like so that was like our high school team was cross country mountain biking. Mm-hmm. Um and then I got into this thing called Enduro mountain biking. Yeah. Which is um it's it's like seven four to seven downhill stages. Yeah. So you pedal your bike up to the top of the mountain, you race down and then you're Does then the you race pedal. count as going up too? You have a start time. So you so if it's like an an hour climb to the top of the stage, that's mm-hmm. like you have an hour twenty minutes to get there. Oh, okay. And then you have to. Would race it really down take an hour twenty? Like that? That's how. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. Your legs are probably gassed. Yeah, it's like five <laughs> seven hour days. Yeah, I know. On a bike, it's gnarly. <laughs> a lot of training. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> so and then you you race downhill and mm-hmm. then your times from the downhills are added up. So it's okay. like that's the quick spark notes version of enduro so the the going up part doesn't really count you just have that time you just have to get there okay you just have to get there yeah. and then the the times going down are the ones that are counting that's when you're racing yeah ah and so that's by cool stage seven when you're seven hours eight hours or whatever into yeah. the day and you're just like seeing things. <laughs> you're delusional at this point you, are you are you allowed to eat anything oh yeah you have you have to at the bigger races you have to be self-sustained okay. so at the world cups you have to carry um, carry tools with you. You have to carry food, water. Yeah. They have well, they'll have water stops. If if your tire goes out, are you the one fixing it? Yeah. Oh, shit. You can get help from other racers, um, but you can't have like a mechanic come in. And like sometimes, some of the races you'll have like a like a zone. Like if you're um, if you if you can make it back to the pits, yeah. you can change it but usually like a stage will end out in the middle of nowhere yeah. then the next stage is still in the middle of nowhere yeah so you and if you get a flat on that stage you have to have a tube with you and change it out there or if you break something you have to figure it out yeah um but the idea of enduro mountain like in this kind of old school um you know just like a day out in the mountains yeah and then making a competition out of it sure so that's what i got into like halfway through high school and then I started racing the World Cups at 16. Yeah. So that's like, that's when I consider going pro, mm-hmm. professional, because once you race the World Cup, like that's, like there's nothing above that. That's yeah. it. So I was racing, so the World Cup has U21 and pro men. Yeah. Those two categories. So U21 is ages 16 to 21. And so when I was 16, like that's what I was racing. Like sure. there's nothing really above me that mm-hmm. I could do. So I'm like, so that's pro. Mm-hmm. So I did that. And then, um, did that and then by what was it like seven eighteen I was I got on a factory team. Mm, and what's then, factory team? So that's uh, I was on factory giant. So that's when the the bike manufacturer um, you're racing for them. So you're, oh, so you were like sponsored by them. Yeah. So it's like you're, it's not like a team through a bike shop or yeah. something. So um, it's a factory team is the highest you can go as far as like a team yeah. aspect. And so literally all I had to do was show up and race. So they, I got brand new bikes, brand new parts. They took care of all of that. They took care of my. That was kind of nice. They t- took care of my travel, um, and everything. So I just showed up and raced. I had a mechanic and everything. That's sick. Yeah, so it was sick. That's sick compared to like what you had to experience like the previous years, like just doing it yourself. Yeah, like, private Yeah, just doing everything yourself. Yeah. So yeah, so and then um. I felt like royalty or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're especially, like, yeah. yeah, especially being so young, because like usually it's like. Yeah. How, teams, <laughs> Factory teams kind of rarely take on U21 yeah. racers. Because so, how old were you? Like 19, 20? 18. 18? Yeah. yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So, and like I had, but, so here's where like everything started to shift. Yeah. I feel like, so even with motocross, naturally, I'm a very smooth rider. Uh-huh. So I, so my injuries through both sports are, I like to say like, I guess the bot, the lowest of the average if that makes sense. So like, okay. So, so most people have more injuries than you. Yeah. By that age. So if there is like, if there is like a, a spectrum of injuries, like average injuries for an athlete in my field, mm-hmm. like, you know, like let's say eight crashes a year is that's a sketchy rider. That it's the dude that crashes and gets hurt a lot. Sure. And then like one a year is like, that's a dude that's very smooth. Yeah. Doesn't get hurt at all. I was at that end. Yeah. So, Every, so all I, all the injuries I have is like, everyone's like, oh, like seven broken bones and like concussion, multiple concussions and stuff. Like, dude, like you're a rest, like you're a wreck. 
I'm like, no, that's not bad. Like, yeah. Everyone else had a lot more than me. I know. Dude, the people who I know, like, by that age had way more than that. Yeah. yeah. So, and then with going from motocross to cycling, it it wasn't, it was a little bit, it was, it was a transition. So, people are like, oh, motocross is way gnarlier than, wait, than mountain bike racing. I'm like... Yeah, a little bit. But mountain biking has more factors. Yeah. Like, in terms of, like, there's a different terrain all the time. Yeah. Versus, like... But you don't get other people on, oh, the, on the course yeah. with you at the same time. Yeah. So, that's, that's what scared me. The motocross ah. is... Especially you the hit people and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Getting run over and stuff. Like, 40, 40 kids on just rocket ships. Yeah. Just <laughs> gunning it. Gunning it to like a little like left hand turn that can fit like five yeah. riders What's into it. What's the speed on motocross? Oh, dude, I don't know. Um I when I was racing it like the mini bikes probably like 50, 60 miles an hour. Yeah, that's still a lot cuz I've seen those kids get I hit. Mean, yeah. And ran over and yeah. shit. Like it happens. But I mean, I was on tracks, so it's all relative. Yeah. So if you Gun it in the straight line on the street. Yeah, you could probably get like sixty miles an hour, but you're not going that fast on a just a super beat up track that's full of breaking bumps and dirt and, and ruts yeah. and sand and stuff. Yeah. Um, but so going from motocross to biking, like for me, for motocross, like racing scared me, mm -hmm. just because of the aspect of other people factoring in. Yeah. Yeah. And with so with cycling and mountain biking, I didn't have that aspect. So it was just nice. yourself. And, um, I, like, I didn't crash really. I didn't hurt myself in mountain biking. Mm -hmm. So I started, really? yeah, at all. no, I was, I didn't have any injuries really until I got in the factory team. Yeah, okay. So I had this, this run of like three, four years of just like, of just being smooth. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And so, and I think, I think motocross helped too, just like. Motocross, just going, stepping down the gnarliest, like gnarliness, mm -hmm. I guess, a little bit. Um, but I was just naturally smooth rider. So I got on this factory team early, and then first race with them, I crash in practice, break my thumb. Fuck. I'm like, what the heck? Like, and like, I'm like, guys, this doesn't normally happen. Like, I swear I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm good. I yeah, promise. Yeah, and like, even the way, and like... The way I got on the team, too, was, like, the guy that runs everything really liked me. Sure. And so uh, some of the other guys on the team, like, mechanics and managers were like, who is this kid? Yeah. You know? So I'm like, all right, this is, I need to prove to them. Sure. First race, break my thumb. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. And then heal up from that second race back. Um, so, I like, I missed a bunch of races because of my broken thumb, honestly. Sure. So I but heal you were second race. Yeah. Heal up from that, my second race. Um first race first stage i made it through practice first stage of the day i crash and dislocate my shoulder and this I'm, is your second race yeah my second race with the oh my goodness team. i'm like are you freaking kidding me dude? so you're like, like pissed at this yeah point. i'm pissed yeah. i'm like i don't understand what's going on i am not a sketchy rider yeah like and like in hindsight i think i just I, like had this i was just pushing myself maybe too much like mm -hmm. i need to prove to them instead of just relaxing and doing my thing and just doing your riding yeah but at the time I'm like, what the fuck? Like I need to I need to get this. And then um I think I was good. I think I came back for like maybe one or two races after that injury. Mm -hmm. And then I think I won them. So so Oh, okay. So yeah. your first two were whack and then right after that you, you won a couple races. Yeah, right at the end of the year. Okay. So just enough to keep me on the team for next year. <laughs> okay. So, so basically those two, those races that I won at the end of the year were like, okay, like he is good. Okay. And then, um, that was 2019. Okay. And then pandemic hits. Yeah. Pandemic hits. So I get, I get two races in with the pandemic. Yeah. And at this point it's my first year in elite men. So the, the pro category. So I've aged, yeah. I've aged out of U21. Yeah. And I mean, genetically i am at a disadvantage to some of these guys too what's that like in terms of like height or like height doesn't really matter right not really but like these guys are there some of these dudes are just genetic freaks like i'm like a pretty slim dude sure but there's the there's i mean this one guy richie he's like five nine um like 220 yeah he's just a tank 
Sure. And so he, does that matter? It so if you can push that weight around, it gives you a huge advantage. How so? He's because he's just so much. Because so with enduro, like you have to sprint, and and the areas, and the areas, um, you're able to pedal if it's flat enough, if it's not bumpy enough, you're sprinting as hard as you can. Yeah. So if you can put out fifteen hundred watts. Yeah. In those sections where of me, power of power, yeah, where yeah. I can maybe get like eight hundred. Yeah. He's going faster than me. In and the straightaways and, and stuff. He can, yeah, and he can just manhandle the gnarly sections too. Yeah. So if I'm like getting buck like bounced around in the rock garden, he's just like the rock garden's like falling apart underneath his weight. Uh, <laughs> just his sheer speed. I didn't think about that because like I f- objectively looking at it from someone who doesn't know the sport that well, like I feel like a lighter guy would do better. Yeah, I mean I would say he's a bit of a unicorn sure but there's still some other guys that like are able to make it work but then you it's but then you still have these french guys that are like five to 100 pounds they're just ripping okay <laughs> <laughs> they're just like and you're just like how do they even like maneuver this sure. way so, so like you kind of got like a rude aw- awakening like when you got into the, the the men's division a little bit yeah because even at like world cups and stuff i was still like a top five guy in u21 yeah and then, and then the the, pref, the like the big pro guys like they still have so much experience that I was sure. running against too. Yeah. And so I got a couple races in in 2020 and like I, I did decently. Mm-hmm. Like I was still making improvements and like yeah. improving each race. But then the pandemic hit. Um, I broke my hand immediately too. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, kind of at home. Just like, well, now what? Like the season got canceled. Yeah. I can't ride. Um, what do I do now? And so I was like, screw it, I'm buying a camera. Because I, and to backtrack a little bit, I raced in Italy in 2018 for a World Cup. Yeah. And I brought my camera with me. I had, I got a camera when I graduated high school. I was like a graduation person. What did you get? Just a beginner Nikon. Okay. So, like a kit camera. Yeah. Like a Costco kit camera. L- yeah, literally. Like yeah. a, like a bundle yeah. from the, in a cardboard box <laughs> yeah with the the two okay lenses and a exactly. decent body exactly i know exactly what you're yep. talking about i have one of those. okay and so and previously like um i'd bring it on i'd bring it to races sometimes and take pictures of the trees or mountains because sure. you still have a couple days where like you'll have like a day you'll get there and you'll have a day and then you'll practice race and then go home sure so like i mean you're in a new place might as well check it out so yeah. like i'd take pictures of the mountains or something yeah. i'm at ski resorts too sure so p- take pictures of trees but like literally like um 2000 so i got i got that camera in 2017 so 2017 to 2020 i'd have like 200 pictures that i take for that camera like a year that's and, not a lot no okay and yeah. with the digital camera now i can take a thousand photos in a photo shoot yeah in a one hour one hour say, photo shoot. yeah let's yeah. say so it was literally like a once like and like my family likes to go to mammoth for like spring break or something yeah. so i bring it up mammoth is awesome yeah so it wasn't like a it was just, it was kind of like a hobby but even barely that yeah and i brought it with me i brought the camera with me to, to italy and for that i was there for a week and took like 150 photos while i was there too okay. just like walking around sure and um so I've always, so I've had a camera. I, I kind of knew how to use it. Uh, sure. And so when I had nothing to do with a broken hand and like no racing, I was like, I'm like, I had money that I won from the year before okay. at those two races that I was able to do. Sweet. I was like, I'm buying a camera. So you're technically pro when you're making money, right? Yeah. 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 And like I could, you could make money at like local races, like sure. hundred bucks or something. Sure. Um, but as far as far as me categorizing being a professional is like racing at the highest level possible. Sure. The best guys in the world. Yeah. Even if I didn't make money. Yeah. Um, so that's because you still get guys that like race the pro class at local races. Yeah. And like, oh, I'm a professional mountain bike racer. Sure. But they never raced the World Cup or anything big. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like a weird. It's not super defined like basketball or football yeah. or something. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, like. When did you learn, I guess, like, so you, you took this camera to Italy and like you were injured in all these things, but like, uh, you have to know like pretty good mechanics about a camera, like aperture, shutter yeah. speed, like those things. Like, uh, uh, did you, did you take those into account like in high school and stuff? Did you already know those to like a T? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I learned the basics 
in high school yeah. and then after i graduated high school 2017 and so 2018 19 and then like the first part of 2020 i went to moore park college part-time which is a community college okay so to, uh, for photography just, asso- just my for associates. Shits. associates degree. yeah cool it was one of those things where like um i don't know what i'm gonna do next yeah okay like, I, like everyone goes to school i should probably do that too sure so you don't know why you're just doing it exactly yeah. i was like and like they're like oh what do you want to major and i was like i don't know business business <laughs> it's a cop-out answer bro Literally, i was like dude i don't like any of these classes um and so i, I ended up taking another a beginner photo class there too okay sick and i still have that like that shitty nikon yeah and so Hey, you can take some pretty good cameras on and shoot an icon, though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, photography is all about... It's the person taking photos more important than the equipment. Yeah. Used. So, uh, I think that was 2019 that I took that photo class. Okay. And so, it kind of got me re-excited. About photography. Yeah. And then, like, doing that again, like, I had took the class with cool people, too. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is fun. And like, yeah. I'm, like, I remember doing this stuff. Yeah. And then, so... Because you kind of took a break. Like you did, yeah. you weren't practicing like for a few years. Yeah, and like, like I mean, I might have brought it to like family vacations, like to Mammoth for in the summer or something. Yeah, sure. But I still barely used it. Yeah. And then, um, that class kind of got me re into it, and then the next next year, like really the next semester, honestly, um, was the pandemic, and then mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you know what? I should I'm gonna buy a camera. Like screw it. So I I bought that Fuji film that I have now. Yeah. And then just having like a new camera in my hands, new like dials, new equipment. Yeah. Just it was like got me excited again. And so I started using it more because I had nothing else to do. So I was, and I started learning more. And then mm-hmm. essentially, like I taught myself everything I know. YouTube's the, the king or what? Yep. Yeah. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, um, I don't know if you've heard of Peter McKinnon. Yeah, I've heard of Peter. Yeah, so I was on his YouTube like every day, yeah. learning as much as I could, sure. and like, I mean, it really was just like I had nothing else to do. Like, let's learn this. Yeah. It was just a project, um, and yeah, like that honestly turned into what I'm doing today. Yeah. Because by the end of the year, um, because I had a broken hand, I got surgery on it, plain yeah. plain screws put in, and then my pinky knuckle was frozen, so I couldn't bend my pinky. Yeah all year so the process of getting back into riding a bike and even racing was so just disheartening and miserable because i couldn't because i hit i hit a ceiling i feel like because i couldn't grip the bar so i could get my fitness back but i couldn't get my skills all the way back because my body was 100 percent. yeah and i couldn't like i couldn't control my bike yeah so i tried with like taping it to the bar like a foam pad or something but yeah. it, it it just never i was never able to get back to where i was fully and i did races slowly started coming back yeah and so i did a race with my pinky you know straight out yeah and i just got my ass kicked and it just bummed me out so much and it wasn't a fitness thing it was it was like a, a pretty gnarly race too yeah and i just couldn't i just didn't have the confidence and i just didn't have essentially the skill that i had before yeah was that your kind of like come to i don't know was that kind of the switch in your head you're like okay like i need to f- figure out something else to do um or no at that point not at that point i'd say mm-hmm. um after that and i was still on the factory team there and like yeah. the, the team told us like we're just like this season isn't like the season got canceled like yeah some races are coming back but we're just gonna restart next year like we're gonna pretend this year didn't happen Mm -hmm. you can do races if you want to you don't have to yeah so i was like all right like i'll just do it just because to get back into the mindset and honestly because i'd rather race than just chill at home sure and so i was like all right there's no pressure from the team to do anything let's just go see if i can't even compete with this hand and then did the race could not compete so we need to do something about this so Mm -hmm. we got uh so we're playing out. So the so that was like the, the last race of the season. Yeah. That I was able to make, and then we're playing out a surgery to get the the plate and screws removed from my hand, and then hopefully that will help. That hopefully that that plate was the problem because the hand is like it's so intricate that like the tendons going over the plate that like, could have been getting stuck. In sure. Stuff. 
And so we're like, hopefully, like, if this doesn't work, then shit, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So, <laughs> so let's get the plate and screws <laughs> taken out. And hopefully that solves Fix our problem. Fix everything. Yeah. yeah. Life's good. So it's like, okay, sick. So we got that planned out. And then, like, the team calls me. And we're like, hey, like, and they're like, hey, like, we're not re signing you for next year. Oh, shit. I was like, what? Like, we're under the understanding that we're just going to reset next year. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, our budget's been cut and yada 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 we don't have we can't afford you and like mind you like the rest of the team had a salary except for me yeah so they weren't spending a whole lot of money on me sure like i always felt like looking back like i felt like a charity case really um and and it sucks because i never got to prove myself because of my injuries yeah um and so even with a few wins and stuff yeah and and even before the team too like my success too so it was, it was just like unfortunate and like that kind of, and then like they signed two new guys after they dropped me. Oh, that's annoying. So it kind of pissed me off. Sure. And um, I was like, what the heck, dude? I'm like, whatever. Like, let's just race next year and like mm-hmm. just look at other options for other teams and then yeah. whatever. And I and like there was still enough people at the company that really liked me that they were still going to help me out. Yeah. Just not with the. Factory the official team. factory team. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. All right, let's just prove them wrong, basically. Yeah. Um, got the surgery, fixed my hand. Thank God. After a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks after surgery, I, I was able, like, after immediately after surgery, obviously just a lot of trauma on your hand after sure. surgery. So I had to go through therapy. Yeah. Um, finger wasn't bending. I was like, oh man. Keep- How's that feeling? That like, obviously, it feels normal just to like bend hands, right? Yeah. And the fact that like you're trying to bend your hand or yeah. your finger and it's not doing anything. Yeah. Like that must it's, be such a weird feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's hard to explain, but like if you just like hold your finger like this. Yeah. And you try to bend, like that's essentially what it was like. Yeah. Like I'm trying to, and it's just stuck. Yeah. Nothing's happening. Yeah. And so. I, it was the same it was back to where it was after surgery and then one day like i think two weeks after or something i was sitting at my desk or just in my room and like i had um i think i i think i was just like holding it or something i was just holding like my finger closed yeah and then all of a sudden like it, it slowly started to move and, and you're like yes like, <laughs> you were so excited yeah i was like oh my god i got ran upstairs to my parents i was like look at i'm making a fist i haven't made a because i had not made a fist in like i don't know 10 months and so i was like we're back <laughs> and then like and then i like and then like i released it and it was like super painful like coming back out too I was yeah like, oh. And then, like, I tried again, like, five minutes later, and, like, it was really hard, and then I finally got it again. I'm like, we're back. Let's, Let's go. go. Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of got me stoked about the next year, but throughout, while this is all going on, like, I'm still, like... Taking photos. Taking photos of my friends and stuff. Yeah. And um, even just, like, I literally, like, go out, just go to the beach at sunset by myself and yeah. take pictures of the sunset. Yeah. And, like, it That's was... so different from what you're doing now, though. Like, yeah. you're doing a lot of, like... Uh, I did a lot of landscape. Yeah. So... And like it was for me at that time, it was like 2020, it became a hobby, I'd say. Yeah. And like, and I looked at it as like something different than bike racing, a distraction. Yeah. And just something to take my mind off of racing. But yeah, literally, I would just take pictures of like landscapes, like the mountains, and yeah. the beach at sunset or something. And mm-hmm. then um, that just continued. And I started doing that more like. And then 2021, like, I had, like, one of my friends, like, hey, could you, like, take pictures of me or something? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I've never taken pictures. For what? Just for fun. Okay. Just, like, some portraits for fun. Like, like she wanted photos of herself. And then um, I was like, yeah, like, I've never taken pictures of a person before. Yeah. But, like, she's a friend. So it's like, sure, like, I'll do it. Let's do it. And so I did that. And, like, after that shoot, I was just like, it like it opened up creative opportunities for me. I was like, this is sick. This is it. I love this. Yeah. So you enjoyed it that first yeah, time. Yeah. I was, like it went so well and like editing the photos was so awesome. Yeah. And like. Do you I, use like Lightroom or Photoshop? Lightroom, yeah. Okay. And like I felt like because I felt like I kind of hit a wall with just taking pictures of landscapes yeah. around my town. Yeah. And like I've taken everything, so I need a, a subject now. Yeah. And so I had. Do a you subject. ever edit subjects at all? Um. I. Well, I was editing colors. Yeah, but would you ever ever edit like bodies? 
No. 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 So that's so, not a thing. Yeah, my style. I mean, you, I mean, some people do like. If you're talking about like Facetune and, and like editing body stuff yeah. like that, I don't. Do you that. don't do that. No, at I all. no, okay. absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people that do that. Yeah. A lot of people that do like uh, Facetune, Photoshop, like bodies look different. Yeah. On, like, I just yeah. I had I just love natural looking stuff uh -huh. too much, and so I want my photos to be natural. Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously they look like, I guess a little bit dreamy, but yeah. there's but there's nothing. Like the person in my photos, like that's what they look like. Yeah, I'm you not, never want to edit like yeah, them. Yeah, so okay. So I'm like, ta I took photos of her, and like it went really well. And then like had another friend like reach out, like, oh, like, I want some photos too. Sick. I'm like, okay, but like I gotta go train and go to this bike race. Yeah. And then, um, so, and that it it naturally evolved too. Yeah. Like doing both of those things. So I was. And like it got to the point where like I think June um, of 2021, okay. I was asked by some friends in San Diego to do um, grad photos. Oh, nice! Yeah, so people I, charge a good amount for grad photos. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know anything about painting. Yeah, so I was like, oh yeah, like a hundred bucks, fifty bucks, hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah, and so they were um, like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was like, I don't like you want to pay me? Like, what the heck is yeah. my photos? Like, cause I still didn't think my photos were that cool. Sure. But, um, and so I remember I had, uh, what did I do? Like I went down there for a weekend and like, I should have been training that weekend cause I had a race next weekend. Yeah. But I was like, they're paying me. Like I'm, uh, how old was I? Like 21, 22. Mm -hmm. I was like, I should probably start thinking about like money too <laughs> so <laughs> just so, feature feature stuff yeah, yeah so yeah. like so like they're paying me i was like yeah I'll, I'll go down there and do this and like have have fun for the grad shoots yeah like grad photos yeah. yeah so i did that and then like the next weekend i went to like missouri or something for a bike race yeah and then just because i was still i was doing photo photography as a hobby mm -hmm. i was missing days i should have been training yeah so with like cycling to be at that level you have to train every day basically every right? day yeah. yeah it's essentially like nine to five every day yeah whether you're on a bike from nine to two in the afternoon yeah or you're in the gym and then you're out on the bike and sure. stuff and then you're recovering yeah um i was well, substituting some of that to go out and take photos yeah so i was essentially a step behind some people sure but like at the time like I was it was transitioning for me to where I didn't even care that I was behind. Yeah. I was like you, you were liking it so much. Yeah. Yeah. And like I was like even on the factory team, I was starting to hit a point where like okay, like the I really enjoy riding, but I feel like at this point I'm racing just to get free product. Yeah. Cuz I like riding on new bikes. I like sure. getting new stuff. Yeah. Um and the passion for like racing started to dwindle because yeah. I felt at some point I was racing for other people and not yeah. so much for myself. Well, there's kind of a ceiling too for racing, right? Like, like it, yeah. Like, when do people usually stop racing? Like, there's a few guys racing. Cycling, you can go pretty far because cycling, I think, is just so good for your body. Yeah. Um, especially if you're good, because if you're good, then you don't get hurt that much. Sure. So there's some guys racing that are like. The oldest I've seen is probably like 36, 37. I was going to say, that's still young though. Yeah. 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 Like coming from my background, like golfing, like you could golf yeah. until like you're 80, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. I mean, extreme sports, you, you're considered old at like 30. Yeah. That was a, which is wild. Which is wild because <laughs> like for, I guess, I don't know if you look at the UFC or like sports in that arena like mm -hmm. 30 to 33 is like prime yeah like fighting you know and stuff like that yeah. when like i don't know uh i just started watching this sport i don't know i got into youtube uh extreme pogo uh really? but what is it like uh the pogo tricks and stuff okay, like yeah, yeah. uh what's it called a uh, pogo Pogo sticks, I think. Pogo so. sticks, yeah. yeah. So they're like, they're doing flips in the air. They're going on rails, all these things. And these kids are like 15, 16, dude. Yeah. And I was like, that is insane. People are getting better at sports younger, I feel like. Yeah. Just with the information of training. Yeah. Um, 
and the fact that and recovery and everything like that too yeah like the science is just like way so f- yeah way advanced now yeah. from when like i guess we grew up but we were way advanced before our parents grew up it's yeah. just like science is evolving in yeah. general everything evolves. yeah and like working out wasn't a thing yeah like i think my generation or our generation is the one like we started working out in high school when like that used to be bad looked at as bad <laughs> yeah like we'd be in the weight room right and like doing all these things at like 13 to 16 yeah. and like before then they were like if you work out at that age it stunts your growth i'm yeah. like no it doesn't yeah. you know it's you you hear that with like even like motocross and like mountain biking too like i don't know like the 80s or something like they go to race and then like smoke a cigarette after yeah go drink and then like they weren't really training kind of monster energy drinks yeah they definitely (laughs) they definitely didn't go to the gym and they just like ride and then now like the kids that are getting into it nowadays they're in like full-on strict programs yeah of gym riding training recovery keep their body like good for a longer period of time yeah it's just i think it's just funny how everything involves yeah really what do you call it so at this point you are not completely done with biking yet though yeah Yeah. so i i had um i think a five race season planned out for Mm -hmm. 2021 and it was like we're just gonna do this on our own like we used to yeah no No factory team no nothing no sponsors yeah i had like i had a few so like the the company was still like helped me out a little bit, but I was basically running my gear, my gear from the previous year. Um, I had a few companies like give me some stuff, but um, luckily since there wasn't much that happened the year before, like my equipment is still fresh. Yeah. The year before, so I just ran all that. I was like, let's see what happens. So, yeah. So we had we had, like let's just do like five races. Sure. Um, do it like we used to, no pressure. Just go out there and and race and get the enjoyment back, and. Like, I went to these races and just, like, the enjoyment just didn't come back. Oh, yeah. So, like, like the first race, like... Did you do okay during them? No. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I was in the professional category at this time. Yeah. And 2021, the World Cup was only racing in Europe. Okay. And there's a lot of good riders in the States. Yeah. So, I was doing the, the, big, the big series for the States. Yeah. And so all the fast to guys. qualify for the world cup you have to do them to qualify but yeah. just but that was all i could do because mm-hmm. i couldn't do the world cups because of covid restrictions sure and so all the the top united states guys were doing this series okay so the competition was still the same yeah and i because i was still i was kind of doing both biking and photo a little bit um i was just a step behind and with my previous injuries too like yeah I was just a little bit behind and I'm very competitive myself and sure. hold myself to a high standard standard. Yeah. For yeah. racing. Like if I'm not winning, probably in photography upset, too, for sure. Yeah. And so I went to this race and like the conditions were just so gnarly. Like it, like it rained the night before and I'm not much of a mud rider because mm-hmm. it doesn't rain in California. <laughs> <laughs> so, not much. Yeah. So, five times a year. Maybe. So it was just a brutal race. Like yeah. it was all day through the mud and slop and like i finished like mid pack yeah and i was just like this is this sucked like, I, yeah. I won't get out of here and then so so like the next and it was like i think it was one race a month or something okay and so went back to the next race um same thing really got my ass kicked and it was just like not into it mm-hmm. like the whole time like i like it was to the point where like i didn't don't even want to like like it's not even motivating anymore like getting my ass kicked i was just like i want to be done with this i'm done so yeah Yeah. and then so um did that race like oh no that race i injured myself yeah so in practice i was like race i was like following a buddy down one of the trails and like ended up hitting a tree because we were, I was like right on his ass, ripping through all these trees, and then like he ducked around a tree, and last minute I saw it and like got, Ooh. shoulder, shoulder slammed and got decked, and yeah. then um, so, like partially separated my AC joint, my shoulder, so I couldn't do that race. Yeah, and I was like, here we go again. Like, I, I'm a rider that doesn't get injured. I'm getting injured all the time. Every time, like every time I try, I get injured. Yeah, like this, you, this didn't happen before. Why is it happening now? Yeah, and so. I'm like something's going on here like this is ridiculous yeah and so i heal up from that come back to the next race 
and then that race was brutal too. I'm just like, like this is like what am I doing? Like this is stupid. Like I I shouldn't be here. Like for this stuff, you can't half-ass it. And I'm half-assing it right sure. now. I'm like, it could be because were you thinking that it could have been been from the photo stuff from you taking a lot of time off? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Sure. Well, it's my passions were changing too. Yeah. Like I I didn't want to stop taking photos. Like I I I was at that point like really enjoying photography yeah and i wanted to do it more yeah and like i couldn't put i was doing kind of like 50 percent effort into both and yeah. like for me like i i can't really for me personally like if i'm gonna do something well i have to do only that yeah like i can't just like pursue both at the same time yeah because they're just both gonna be like half ass mm. um so for me i had to pick one mm. essentially and at that race i was like um i was like this is ridiculous and this my, is it. my parents were even like okay we're saying this too and yeah. now you have to pick one so is that when like you threw in the towel yeah and like that i race. still had i still had some more races after that i was okay. like i don't want to be doing this anymore like, done I, I, I'm and done. that was like late 2021 yeah it was late 2021 okay and then they're like all right well then you have to make photography work you have to figure this out i was like i will I'll figure it out. Like, uh, just, you're just confident. Yeah. I was right, like, hold up, dude. I got to go pee. Give me a second. Sorry. <laughs> I can't think right now. <laughs> and we're back. We're back. What do you call it? Um, how, Do you think that's like real? The fact that like uh, you had to choose something because like I struggle with that for me too. I'm so interested in a lot of things. Yeah. Like uh, I guess like podcasting, personal training, like yeah. bartending, all these things. And like, um, I feel like I'm never giving like a hundred percent effort to like that one thing, but I also think like you could, you could get really good at all those things. Like, I feel like yeah. you could get good at photography and not necessarily biking. Cause that's like totally different, Yeah. Uh, but maybe like photography, videography, editing, yeah. like those things, or I don't know. You I know what I'm saying? It, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. I think that's, um, it's specific to individuals. I feel like, mm -hmm. so some people can do that. Mm -hmm. me personally i i i just can't like, mm -hmm. i need to focus solely on one thing to be good at it yeah so and like my just way of doing things is like um i'm competitive like i said so mm -hmm. if i'm not if like i have to be doing good at whatever i'm doing mm -hmm. if i'm not i'm not, not gonna be happy and to mm -hmm. do that to achieve that, I have to put all my energy and effort into mm. one thing. Yeah. And so I have to have just like, you know, one plan A. Yeah. So even with photography, if like, with photography now, like that's all I do. Yeah. And like, if I was trying to do like something else, um, you know, like even for like a lot of people, like will work like a nine to five and mm -hmm. then try and do photography on the side and like build it up as like a side project. Sure. If I was doing that, my photography would suck right now. You think so? hundred percent. I'd know that mm -hmm. like and even the transition from doing biking and photo to where i'm now like uh, as soon as i stopped racing bikes as soon as i put the bike aside like i made like insane gains gains on in, your photography and my craft yeah. yeah how did it feel to give up something that was such a big part of your life for so long it was weird it was rough and like definitely like um i'm just starting now to get comfortable with it really yeah because my my essentially my entire life was competing and racing. Yeah, I feel like you defined a lot of who you are with yep. biking, with racing, with yeah. all those things. From six years old to yeah, twenty two. How how, did, how does it feel to like let it go finally? It feels good now. Yeah. Um, it feels right now. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was just like, even like the couple months after, I was like, oh, I think I fucked up. Like yeah, <laughs> because it's it is who you are for so long. I guess yeah. for me, like. Um, golf was such a huge part of my life for yeah. a very long time. Yeah. And it's like what you do every day. Mm -hmm. You practice at it every day. Yeah. And you're, it's, it's just your daily life. And yeah. all of a sudden it's not anymore. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. What do I do now? What do I do now? Yeah. And so like I, I gave, and I was just like a beginner photographer too. Yeah. And like I, I wasn't, it wasn't even like. You kind of just dove into it though. Yeah. It wasn't even like, oh, like I'm a really good photographer mm -hmm. and. I'm getting a lot of business with this. I should yeah. probably switch over. Like I had zero business. Yeah. I had just started. I just was still watching YouTube channels on how yeah. to use a camera basically. Yeah. And like, I just like, I'm really liking this right now. Um, I want to do that. Yeah. 
And so, and to do, like, I can't do both. So I stopped yeah. racing bikes and just, yeah, dove head first into it. But then, yeah. you know, even the rest of last year, I was like, I, I questioned it, like, at first. But I, I was even thinking, mm-hmm. like, a couple months after, I'm like, could I, would I go back and race a bike right now? Or or would I want to? Could I? I was mm-hmm. like, no. Yeah. Like, I'm not, like. If I think that's when you know. Yeah. Like. Oh, there's a race in this weekend. Should I do it? Like, absolutely not. Yeah. So, and especially, it feels good now. To yeah, I feel like that's it. a healthy spot. Yeah. And so, like, even this year, like, I started shooting film in May mm-hmm. of 2022. And oh, you, you shot film recently. Yeah. So, you've only been doing it for not that yeah, long. Yeah, so everything you see is, I don't know, what is that, six, seven something months? That's crazy because like just the quality of it's like really good for yeah. I guess you're not doing it that long. Yeah, I guess for your clientele and like uh, the models that you work with, like some that I've looked at, they're uh, pretty like known like yeah. in the modeling industry. Yeah. How did you I guess get those contacts or they worked with those type of models and stuff yeah. like that? So, um, like I said, at the beginning of 2021, like I shot with a friend mm-hmm. that kind of got me into taking pictures of people, mm-hmm. and then. Um, I slowly like, I maybe shot with her like a couple times and I had another friend reach out. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of 2021, I took some, I shot with, I think total of three people, mm-hmm. maybe. That's um, it? Yeah. Three people. Yeah. Maybe four. And then it was like, I try and do a shoot with them like mm-hmm. once every two months or something. So I did like five, six photo shoots last year. Mm-hmm. Um, probably more but like not maybe like once a month but not what i'm doing right now yeah and so um and then like i i did some biking stuff too Mm because like people were recognizing that i was doing photos but um i i shot only with friends that i knew in 2021 yeah and then like i ended up doing this like little photo shoot at the end of 2021 with um with like a hair salon in Malibu, mm-hmm. and then met some like a group of people of girls from Pepperdine, mm-hmm. and then um they all like reached out to me individually after to do some sh- shoots. Oh, sick! Yeah, and like I met them all there too, and like chatted with them a little bit, mm-hmm. so like it was like we were like comfortable with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so beginning of twenty twenty two, that was like my new group of friends that I was shooting with. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of like rotate with them and just like, it was the, and like I knew in my head, the main goal was to build my skills. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, Oh, like I'm this photographer now. Like yeah. you're lucky to shoot with me or something. Like <laughs> I was like, can I like please just practice on you guys? Sure. So, um, and then once I got to a point in like May where I was confident enough, mm-hmm. um, I even like, Cause even all the inspiration that I look at, cause I look at like a lot of the like photos on Pinterest or mm-hmm. from other photographers. I didn't even know Pinterest was a thing still, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I figured that out recently too. Um, I'm, photography made me realize that that was a thing. Cause okay. before photography, I was like, what's Pinterest? You sure? Yeah. I, I, I don't even know how I discovered it. Yeah. But I was like, wait, there's actually like a lot of art on here, like artistic stuff on here. Yeah. Like it's not just for shopping or whatever people use it for yeah um and then even like watching i got more into movies too Mm -hmm. um which helps with just being inspired and stuff so yeah um yeah i was shooting with this like just kind of rotating like once a month with Mm -hmm. these people and then in may like i was like okay like i don't i think i need to like i need to step up more like i've kind of level up yeah a little stagnant right now and then so um all my like inspiration has been film photography and stuff and Mm -hmm. like my just natural aesthetic was kind of moving to what it is now Mm -hmm. and just and like my natural aesthetic comes from what i like too it's not like i'm trying to be in this category i'm Mm -hmm. not i'm not purposely trying to shoot aesthetic photos that fit this category like Mm -hmm. they just come out naturally because of what i personally like Mm -hmm. myself and so this is all starting to come um, this is all starting to happen right now. And then, um, like I need to shoot like film photography and, and I need to work with other people too. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and my grandma passed away like the year before. So we're or, like earlier. So we're cleaning out her house and like mm-hmm. 
we bring home my grandpa's film camera mm-hmm. and like i was like does this thing wait what the heck does this thing work, work? <laughs> yeah and so i check it out and it does yeah i was like wait this actually works no way and so like i bought like one film roll and then like used it and then just like oh, i like, fell in love with the process <laughs> yeah this is like opened up this whole new like world thing. yeah and so i just like slowly started transitioning and then at that time too i was like kind of just felt stuck with like the people i was working with i was mm-hmm. like i need to shoot with like new people and like legit models mm-hmm. and it's not not like i was from the beginning i was like i want to work with models like that was never like the goal mm-hmm. I kind of didn't really have a goal from the beginning. I've just naturally just gone with the flow. Mm-hmm. And then so, but I was really enjoying shooting with models and, and stuff. And like it transitioned from like all 2021 was friends and like just regular portraits like in town or something. Mm-hmm. And then like the beach stuff started to come in 2022. Like I had one person like, oh, can we go to the beach and like do swimwear and stuff? I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. like, sure. like, yes and then i was like wait this is sick and then like that just progressed too and then mm. i was like in may i was like i need to work with new people and like i personally am like like a quiet person introverted so like reaching out to people is hard mm-hmm. and so i was like but you knew that's like what you had to yeah, do yeah exactly okay. yeah so i went on instagram i had 400 followers yeah and just like oh you grew following pretty quickly yeah that's crazy yeah, yeah. so i had like 400 followers i was like screw it so i went up like i searched up hashtag like la model on like instagram and tiktok and yeah. just like found like 30 40 models within the area and just sent them all dms was okay like, hey like hey so and so like i love your work like um, I'd love to do a test shoot with you. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a mood board of what I'm thinking. Let me know if you're a interested. mood board. Yeah. So a mood board is basically a photo with a set with like just a bunch of images on it mm-hmm. to just let them know kind of what the vibe you're thinking of. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's all inspiration photos. Um, and like, the, and basically the mood board is what you're going to try and capture with that person. Mm-hmm. So like, here's all, so I, so I, I selected a bunch of photos that I liked that I wanted personally wanted to try and get mm-hmm. myself sent them to them so they understood like the the vibe i was going for mm-hmm. that way we're not just like showing up randomly like okay like what are we shooting like, yeah where are we shooting you know like i, I laid all, all the details for them so mm-hmm. all they had to say so you was, planted the whole thing out yeah beforehand so, yeah so all okay. they had to say was yes or no yeah or yes or just don't respond at all yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so i got like five i think five responded out of 30 40 okay that's pretty good yeah that's a that's a good percentage yeah and it was it was five throughout the month so it wasn't okay. all at once okay so some responded late yeah after i did some shoots already yeah. some other people and so and some fell through okay but i shot um so the transition to film and reaching out to these people all happened at the same time and then like i did like the first couple of shoots um on digital and film okay and they but they went well so they went really good. We got cool photos. And at the same time, like I had some, uh, like two Instagram reels blow up okay. as well. Like getting millions of views and stuff. And oh, shit. I, and I gained like a lot of followers. Yeah. And unfortunately, like the follower count on your social media profile, like it, it really does do something. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It, it's, it, it's a, it it's a big you, thing. Yeah. It gives you validation because mm-hmm. if you see someone like with the k next to the follower you're like yeah. oh this per- other people think this person is good i think i should think they're good too yeah but if you see someone regardless if they have cool photos like yeah 300 followers you're like okay this is weird I'm yeah not follow. i don't want to <laughs> like, i don't want to be the, i don't want to like be the first one to follow them you know sure so i had, luckily I had a couple people take a chance on me and yeah then, um we got really good photos i got really good photos with them and started posting them and people were like wait these are sick and, then, and this is just straight like instagram dms yeah okay Instagram DMs and then like I had I gained um, from these two reels blowing up I gained like five thousand followers yeah and so that helped with the validation and helped with people saying yes to me and oh so that's sick it's all happening at the same time so this is kind of like mid like traction right now yeah yeah and then so um, the whole month of May like and I was like I was doing these for free too like mm-hmm. film with film photography you're paying for it like you have to buy the film yeah and then you have to pay it's to a lot more money than digital right. Yeah, digital doesn't cost you anything. No. You you have to pay for 
the Lightroom yeah. program, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but with film, I'm buying the film, and film's hard to get right now, and film's expensive. Yeah, right how is it, why is it hard to get? Because uh, there is, especially with Kodak, there is one small factory in New York that's making this film. Yeah. So everyone thinks Kodak's a huge company. Some people think they went out of business. Yeah, the Kodak stock's been like up and down for the last yeah. two years like crazy. Yeah, so Kodak is still around. Yeah. But because the digital, they were so big when film photography was popular, and then the digi- digital photos came, digital cameras came through, mm-hmm. and they just like heavily downsized. Yeah. Like they lost, they stopped making money essentially, but they st- were still there. Yeah. And so, and honestly, because of COVID, everyone mm-hmm. got, a lot of people got into film photography because of COVID. Sure. And then it's just like all of a sudden everyone wants to shoot film. And yeah. they're like, oh shit, like we don't have the resources to supply all this. Yeah. So um, I have text alerts for when film's in stock and it sells out in two minutes. Oh, really? So it's hard to get still right now? Yes. And it's expensive. And they keep raising the prices and that doesn't do anything <laughs> because people will still pay it. <laughs> yeah, because objectively it's like not that expensive. Like it is $30, $40 a roll probably. Yeah. But like there are so many people who want to do it that there it's worth doing yeah. yeah yeah and like even early 2000s yeah they were selling them for two dollars a roll yeah and they're everywhere mm-hmm. but now they sell in two minutes and it's ridiculous yeah so this is all going on i'm paying all this money for to shoot with these people yeah. i'm just like i'm not telling myself to like this i just have to you know this is just part of the process i just have to put my head down Stay focused. Yeah, is that gonna? Through. Is that kind of the same process that you're, gonna, that you're continuing to do? Like hitting up like bigger ish people, the more followers you get, and so like right now, um, and this is like all that stuff too is like pro- portfolio work. Mm-hmm. So like I need that's all me saying like I have to make the sacrifice to get better. To have and like a good like I guess, I guess like resume right yeah. not resume whatever they call portfolio. it portfolio yeah. yeah so i have to build my portfolio i have to get better at what i'm doing yeah like it's the same with bike racing you have to practice you have to train to get good yeah, yeah exactly sure. so that's what i was you can doing. get your reps in yeah, exactly yeah. that's what i was doing yeah and then so um and then honestly since like june or july i had a point where i had where i stopped reaching out to like models mm-hmm. and people to shoot with and they all started reaching out to me Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and then since I I sent all those initial DMs in May, and then I've maybe reached out to like, or since since that initial send out, yeah. I've probably, or since even that month, because I still reached out to some people later in the month. Yeah. But since then, I've, I've, DM, I've DM'd like maybe three people yeah. since then. So then everyone's been reaching out to me. Oh, that's awesome. Which is awesome because that, because it's, it's more of they want to shoot with me instead of like, oh, yeah, I'll be... I'll just let this guy shoot with me. So sure. Instead of being the charity case, you know. Yeah. Um. And so now, so now, like, I get like a couple DMs a week or something. Yeah. And which is nice. And like, and it's it's this thing for me where like I enjoy it so much that mm-hmm. I'm willing to shoot with everyone. Mm-hmm. Like I I wish I didn't have to charge you. Yeah. For this because I love it so much. Yeah. Um, and so it's still a balance of charging some people, yeah. charging, not charging other people. You kind of have to though, cause you're paying, paying money for the film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah. And so now I'm at the point where instead of me reaching out to models, I reach out to brands. Yeah. And so just try and get like paid gigs and stuff. Yeah. And I still have like some paid gigs that come to me naturally, yeah. but, um, there's I'm, so much. I'm potential. excited to see like your next two years, bro, because oh, dude, you kind of, you kind of just like, it hasn't been that long. No, it hasn't. You know? And like. The thing that I struggle with is, like, I still have a bad habit of comparing myself to others, mm-hmm. and the people I'm comparing myself to are ten years into this. Yeah, into yeah. This. That what's that quote? The comparison is a thief, thief of, of joy. joy. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I like, I definitely like, I don't care what other people think of me, and like, oh, I'm just doing this for myself, my own thing. But sure. You know, I'm human too. Everyone's human, bro. Yeah, and at like, one point, I see these people, these yeah. photographers that are well established. Mm-hmm. You know, doing campaigns in Italy and yeah. Europe and with like. Is that kind of like the end goal? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, like basically traveling around the world, living this insane lifestyle, mm-hmm. and they're getting paid to do it mm-hmm. just for their photos. Yeah. 
And I'm like, that's what I want to be. I'm like, I should be doing that right now. Yeah. And I have to take a step back and like, you just started. This dude's been at it forever. He's been at it for 10, 20 yeah. years, you know? So that that's like the main thing I struggle with right now. Yeah. But, you know, I'm just still excited. Again, and the cool thing about photography is you don't know what's around the corner. Yeah. Really. And like, yeah. you can have a kind of a basic game plan, I guess, mm-hmm. but you still don't know. One thing yeah. I do love about photography, I don't know much, but like, I took like a. You know who Ben Long is? Mm-mm. So like, uh, like uh, LA Library, they have just like like free photo classes. So yeah, this okay. guy like Ben Long's on there, and uh, I I had a kit camera, a Nikon camera too. Yeah. I just bought a Sony A7 III. Sick. I just don't know how to use it yet, so uh, we'll get there. <laughs> no, that's a great camera. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't know how to use it, but we'll, we'll work on it. And uh, I, my client who did the astrophotography, he was like, he told me this quote, or not, not quote. He told me this thing one time. He was like, one, the reason why I take do photography is because you could capture a moment in this lifetime, yeah. and it will never ever happen again. Yeah. You know, and you're capturing that moment. You're and, freezing a moment in time. And freezing a moment in time, and it's, it, and you have like a document of it. Yeah. And he doesn't do it for anyone else besides besides himself. He has he's like in his sixties. Yeah. And he has uh I don't know what the this it Asperger's or something okay. like that. So he he doesn't socialize with people. He gets along with like kids. Like yeah. he likes being alone. And yeah. he just does photography for himself. Yeah. And he just talks about photography so romantically. Yeah. About just like freezing time and this is like documenting my life exactly and my dog yeah the stars in the sky <laughs> yeah at this point in time yeah and that's why it's beautiful to me yeah and i was like wow that's cool yeah uh, you and know for me it's like the same thing but i'm like for me it's almost like it's just creating what's in my head too mm-hmm. so like, there's a lot of people like that where they they document i guess kind of what they do and like their dog and stuff you know and that's yeah. beautiful to them yeah for me it's like it's creating a world and then like physically creating it too especially with film like you're physically creating it sure and you're, like, you're actually putting that image on a piece of paper yeah and like you're like i have this for me it's like i have this idea um it's just going to eat me alive if it stays in my head mm. and so to bring that to life mm-hmm. is really cool and then see other people appreciate get, it get excited about yeah it. and like it's so awesome Do, have you ever printed out any of your film stuff yeah okay. um so Actually, with film, my film photos, I haven't. I've printed some of my digital photos. Okay. Um, but I definitely would do want to start doing that more. Yeah. And, like, I love to one day, like, do a photo book, like a coffee table. Well, photo one book thing too. that I think, bro, like, for example, that photo of the Porsche yeah. with uh, the girl's legs out of yeah. it. Like, if you print out a big, bro, like, I would buy that photo. Yeah, I and have. I, and I would hang it up. I have like a, I have a print shop too. It's on there. Yeah. So I do have like a, it's like a third party that I use to make prints. Okay. Um, it's called, it's called dark room lab or something. Okay. So like I have, I have a bunch of my photos on, um, the original Porsche photo shoot I did is on there. Okay. I'm a, I'll put the second one on too soon. Oh, I've never seen you advertise it at all. Yeah. Um, I, I advertise it so, sometimes. It's yeah. just, because I feel like selling prints, dude, would be huge for you. Yeah. Like, and that's just like another way of revenue that like, yeah. it's like you, you have validation that people appreciate your stuff yeah. and you get even more validation by like someone buying your stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, but I've never seen like one thing on your Instagram that's, that shows like, oh, these are my prints yeah. for sale. Well, like, and that's the other <laughs> thing too. I'm, I'm still learning too. Sure. Like, I'm still new. Like I get caught up in, um, posting photo or taking photos that i forget that i do have a print shop yeah and that there's stuff on there that people might want it too yeah and so like that's the other thing too like i'm still like learning so much and still mm-hmm. figuring this stuff out i like i don't i had just got into this world too like people ask me to like oh you know this photographer you know this person i'm like no no <laughs> like i literally like like a lot of these people like a lot of these photographers are doing it now yeah like, they've been doing or like wanting to be a photographer since they was little or yeah. they've been taking photos ever since they were little. They used to work at camera shops. I'm like, yeah. I just entered this world. Yeah. I don't know anything. Yeah. So I'm still trying to But you to do learn. a lot, and you do know a lot more than other people. For sure. Because uh, the effort's there, and it's the only thing you're doing. Yeah. You know, because uh, back to what you said, like, I feel like if you focus on one thing for a long enough period of time, you're, like, going to yeah. be great. Exactly. 
And um, I forgot which quote I heard this from, but like, if you're bad at something long enough, you're going to be good. If yeah. you're good at something long enough, you're going to be great. And or, if you're great yeah. at something long enough, you're becoming undeniable. Exactly. And then if you're undeniable, you it's like you're going to get paid for your shit. Yeah, exactly. Or if you like, I've heard this other one, like if you put 100% effort into something, the only way you can fail is if you quit. Yeah. And so it's the only thing. Yeah. So that's like, that's what I do now. Like I just only do photo. I have like so much passion behind it right now. Yeah. And like, it's the only thing I'm pursuing and I have no, yeah. no plans of like, ever stopping. Yeah. There's, there's, no like, there's, like, there's no plan B. Like, yeah. Like if you want to take the island, burn the boats. Sure. Kind of thing. So yeah. That's what I'm doing right now. And like, yeah. I just like, even though if it could be like, up, even though my business, is like just starting now, it could like, I have good days and bad days, good months. And bad like months. everybody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, I just know that it's like, like everyone around me tells me like, oh, you're going to be huge one day. Yeah. And like you deserve, I'm like, I know. Yeah. Like, I know. It. I'm yeah. Just, it's part of the process. We're coming. That's the thing too, though. Like, um, like you say that such in a way that's very confident, but like a lot of people will say that too and I'll get it taken the wrong way. I was like, like, you'll know like that people who aren't that good will say that too. Yeah. And that's the, that's the fine line too of just like, how do you distinguish like which person is going to make it or not? It's like yeah. the type of deal, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, I mean, that's where, like, ego's come into play. Ego's so. going to play. So. I, I want to talk about <laughs> art real quick um, because I guess, like, photography is a form of art, right? Yes. You, would you agree? Oh, yeah. And uh, I guess, like, beauty is a huge thing. And do you ever think about, like, the psychology or the history of, like, uh, beauty and stuff? Because, like, it's kind of objective, but also, like, not as well. Like, for example most people will agree this photo of this Porsche with this girl's yeah. like legs out is extremely attractive and beautiful. Yeah. I would say in my opinion, 99 out of a hundred people will agree that it is beautiful. Yeah. But like, There's it's just, a, just don't get it. it's just a car yeah. with the girl's legs out of the, out though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 100%. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, it, it objectively you're like, sick but yeah. then you look at it you're like there's a story there yeah but i don't even really know what the story is there's yeah. a lot of like um loose ends yeah that like you could in your head maybe like she's drunk and is in this cool car <laughs> yeah. and like whatever or she you know like you can make up these stories from yeah. that photo there's so many open-ended like yeah. things that anyone can interpret it as yeah. i think that's like that's probably a good way to s describe my photos too mm -hmm. because even like from photography classes and hearing other photographers talk about their work like mm -hmm. they're always like create a story like the story is the most important part yeah and i've always like and like what does your what do your photos mean like what's the story behind your photos mm -hmm. and like when i was just taking the classes like i don't give a shit like i don't care like i just want like the photo looks cool i don't care mm -hmm. about the story mm -hmm. and then um like i don't I don't know how to tell a story. Like, I don't care about that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they, t and is like, that still, is, is that still how it is? Yeah, I'd say so. And like, that's kind of been like my whole thing and how I got into where I am too. And like found, I guess that's ironic though, because like for me observing your photo, I think there is a story to it. Yeah. And so, um, for me, like my whole, the way I think is like kind of think the opposite to what this, the rules are. Mm. So they teach you tell a story um, composition I'm like nah <laughs> let's try something else and even with film too they're like oh you have to overexpose your photos by one stop and like you have mm -hmm. to do this and this I'm like nah I'm gonna under underexpose mine by a stop okay. I'm gonna do this I'm gonna try this so yeah and that's just kind of how I found my way to where I am now and then do you underexpose by a stop sometimes okay so if I like now I kind of know what everything's gonna look like so if I do so it's it's all specific to sure. lighting and um, the scene and scenarios and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, but like what I was hearing was like you have to do it this way in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then I was like, "Don't tell me what to do." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm I'm so stubborn too, just yeah. like, like me personally. And so yeah, that it could be a downfall sometimes, but it helps in other times. Sure. And so. Um, yeah, I, I just even with the story thing, like that all just comes out naturally. Like mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not. I think some people think too much about mm -hmm. trying to create a story, and then they're just yeah. like, 
and then you look at their photos and they're like this is it though staged. because of these mood boards and stuff that you're talking about that is the story that you're trying to yeah. portray yeah and i like that it's open for interpretation yeah and like even like i don't know I, maybe i'm just a weird but i just don't like i just love the visual aspect of this stuff yeah and there just happens to be a story in there mm-hmm. i think is how it happens sure and um and yeah, you know, for me, I just like, I get this way with like even TV shows or movies too. Like yeah. the story of the movie might be kind of lame, but then like the visual aspect is so cool. I'm mm-hmm. just like, oh, I love this. Sure. You know, and like that's just how I am. And like, I've, I never try and like, like I just like I just do I just create what I what's in my head. Yeah. And then if people interpret it as a story, there, awesome. Sick yeah cool <laughs> if, if, if you don't if you just like think it's a cool image cool both like, both both parts like, regardless i'm enjoying it and like, yeah this is fun for me yeah so yeah i don't know if you have any advice to i guess like people who want to take photos and stuff or like get into ph- photography just yeah. for like their own for their dog or for their family yeah. because i feel like having a photographer family is dope because you actually get <laughs> <laughs> all good you get uh you get family portraits and shit mm-hmm. like that and like you get cool stuff where, like where do they start where do they like do they get that kit camera at costco yeah. and uh what how, how do they start you just start you, you just, just start you just start just start clicking use your phone too yeah um phones are underrated nowadays too because yeah. a lot of people think they can't get a good photo but like phones are like insane now yeah i mean looking back and like um, with hind- hindsight, it's a beautiful thing, but I had, I got, a, <laughs> I got iPod touch when I was in, uh, iPod touch. I remember when they, those. When they first came out with the camera on the iPod touch. When was that? Uh, that was a long time ago. Sev- I was in seventh grade. So I think that was like 2011, 2012. Okay. And, um, I brought that with me on my like, school trips and stuff. And I was taking photos. Okay. And I was taking landscape photos and they were cool. I went to Washington DC in eighth grade and brought my iPod touch and actually I had a smartphone by then and like was taking photos of everything. Yeah. And so it was, it's been there, mm-hmm. this talent of taking photos and this eye I had for art has yeah. been there, yeah. but it was just not looked after or looked at it really. Well, I feel like you just weren't around the people who appreciated it. Yeah, that's true. I was around even like my family too. Like you're an athlete. Yeah. Like being an athlete. Yeah. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And like, it's just that it's always been there. It just wasn't yeah. ever nurtured. And mm-hmm. um, now, like, I mean, now I'm surrounded by people that really love what I do and mm-hmm. like, that are artists themselves, too. Sure. Well, so it definitely helps. Yeah. What do you think? I don't know. I get so inspired by, like, because I would say most of my friends in L.A. now are mm-hmm. all artistic. Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. And I get inspired by them on the daily. Yeah. And it's just weird growing up for me. It was athletics. It was just like school. Yeah. Like it was school and athletics. Yeah. That's really it. Yeah. And like now it's like 180. Yeah. And it's basically about creating and doing what you love. Yeah. And doing those things. And it's it makes life so much enjoyable. Yeah. So much more enjoyable. It, it does. You know? Every every day is like a new opportunity. And yeah. It's yeah it's it's being creative Uh has been so much more fulfilling for me how so just um just the interactions i have with people Mm -hmm. just like creating something out of nothing too so with athletics like you wake up you do what you're supposed to do yeah you go to sleep yeah and you're just you're just fulfilling objectives for the day yeah instead of like I don't know. It's it's a different than just like because like it's mindless too. Like mm. athletics is pretty mindless. Like you rinse just, and repeat. Exactly. You turn your brain off. You do the work, and then you get the results. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. And that was the other thing too with ath- like racing too. Like I knew I was good, but like just because you're good doesn't mean you're gonna do well mm-hmm. on race day. Yeah. There's other factors involved, and so when something when shit happens. Yeah. And you get you know, a bad result. You're like, Oh God, damn. Yeah. Like, I hate myself. But I feel like we were talking about this outside before we started the podcast, yeah. like athletics and that world is like, if you work hard and you grow your skills, like in that aspect and you become faster, like I guess for bike racing yeah. and stuff, it's linear. Like yeah. you do the work, you get faster. There you go. Exactly. That's the thing. There might be an outside factor of like a tree fucks you up, whatever. Yeah. But like for a photo, you take 
a thousand photos with a thousand different photographers line it up and you describe which one's more beautiful you're like yeah they're not Each one person's not one of them's answer. faster yeah yeah so like that's the tricky part with creativity for me because mm -hmm. for example this podcast might speak to like two people three people four people or it could be a thousand people yeah. but like some people might think it's cool but some people might think it's not yeah you know like there's no like measurement of good or bad yeah, exactly and for me that's just like i just think of that like it is what it is like if you like <laughs> so you it, don't think about it really no like if you like it cool if you don't whatever okay like i'm not i'm not trying to appeal to people who don't like my stuff mm. so um this is what i enjoy and so I'm. where do you do think it. you got that mentality from because i don't think that's sports really i don't know yeah, because that's very unique. I try, yeah. I try my best to do that, but like again, like humanity comes in, and like someone's like, um, I don't like the way you said this, or I don't like this or that, and I'm like, okay, sick. But then yeah. I, you say that, and you try to brush it off, but in the back of my head, I'm like, hmm, like I wish they liked it. Yeah, I mean, I deal with that too. Sure, but that's like, it's more reaction based mm -hmm. for those feelings. So like, yeah. if someone's just like okay well, like i don't like that you did this i'm like okay like 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 in the moment i'm like ah shit sorry yeah. like you know but then after a while I'm like whatever yeah like brush it off yeah um i but where it comes from i don't know yeah like maybe i guess let's talk about your creative process real quick like um yeah what do you go through like uh, for example you have to prepare for a shoot yeah and then you have to do the shoot and then you have to edit right yeah um or some sort of editing yeah right uh like i guess from the beginning part like are you just sitting in your room thinking about ideas and <laughs> like i'm gonna have a cigar here and a bikini over here yeah. and a pool over here like what is it um it just i don't know it just comes to me so um like all i'm always like on like i don't know pinterest like looking at like i'll look at photos on there once a day or something mm -hmm. um with music and like watching movies and stuff scrolling mm -hmm. on instagram yeah um but like honestly i'm the type of person that like you throw me in the deep end and i'll swim sure but if you're like you have to like if you tell me like ahead of time like you're gonna have to go swim in this freezing ass water like i'm like oh, fuck, like oh, god <laughs> I, I overthink it oh, yeah um and so like a lot of times like if someone reaches out to me to shoot uh -huh. i'm just like i already kind of have like i'm already thinking of stuff to do like i i might have some photos i want to get already mm -hmm. um just by naturally like scrolling on instagram mm -hmm. um watching movies listening listen to music and stuff yeah but then like so like i'll not like i'll already have like some ins like an inspo folder that yeah. i can go through that i'll just go through just to show them like this is where i'm thinking but like for the most part like sometimes i'll just like i just won't think about the shoot mm-hmm like if we plan like a week in advance, I just won't think about it until that day. Yeah. And like because that's just you swimming in the deep end. Yeah. And, and not then, thinking about it. And then it. that day, like I'm like, all right, let's go shoot. And then like driving down there, I'm just like, mind's blank. Just <laughs> listening to other stuff, and then I show up, and then just everything's like on the spot huh. for the most part. Uh, that's and, interesting. And obviously, like now I'm I'm getting better at like planning kind of photos shots before mm -hmm. too. Um, but actually, like um, this might tie into this but like i got like a brain scan recently and so they measure like my why did you get a brain scan because my dad's a doctor <laughs> okay <laughs> and so he has he's got friends that do this stuff so yeah. they measured like my alpha waves and beta waves and stuff okay. and so what it told me is that um i for something i'm interested in yeah i can put 100 percent focus and effort into it mm -hmm. and like i'm zeroed in on that and mm -hmm. if um there's something that I just don't really care about then like i can't focus at all like so it's not like so it like how this ties into photo i guess is that like i just i don't know because i even told the dude that was um doing the scanning stuff too that like i was like telling him that like i can't like i'm pretty bad planning stuff mm -hmm. but i can think on the spot and he's like yeah well that's he's like well that's interesting because like um or, or uh, this was before the scan I, or when we we're going over results i forget when but like um it's just like it's just the way i'm wired mm -hmm. that with photo shoots like getting there on the spot like i'm just enjoying it so much sure. and that 
the process of holding the camera in my hand, looking through the viewfinder, just unlocks this creativity in my brain. Mm. And that, like, it's hard. Not really hard, but, like, I just... Like, if, it, if there's not a camera in my hand, I'm not necessarily thinking about photo that much. Mm. So it's just the whole... And especially with film, I think film, since film is more of a process of physically loading in a film canister mm-hmm. and stuff, that process just gets my gears working mm. differently than not having a camera in my hands and stuff. I don't know if any of that made sense. No, that makes sense. But, like, it's just funny that, like, you need that camera in your hand because, like, I don't know, you look at creative directors. Yeah. Um, they come up with cr- the creative ideas and they don't actually physically take the photos. Yeah. Right? And it's funny that you're coming up with these creative ideas, but just with the camera in your hand, you're the you're everything. You're the DP, you're the creative yeah. director, you're doing all the things. And, like, I, I still, like... It's not to say I can't come up with an idea when I don't have it, when I'm not on a Sure, shoot. I know, but you're saying that, like, you're just more on. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, also, like, I'll still, I'm always kind of thinking creatively, too. Yeah. And so, but it's not like, for for most of my stuff, like, it mm-hmm. kind of comes to me. Yeah. And it's, I'm also, like, like, a lot of my photo shoots and creativity is dependent on location and the person i'm with like yeah. the inter- interaction yeah. i have with them so it's not like like some people can just like create what they want yeah you're I putting so much them. emphasis on the connection with your yeah. models and yeah. uh that i've never heard that before because like uh, i feel like a good photographer no matter what type of model you are who even if you're good friends or not, like yeah. they can direct a photo shoot decently. Yeah. But for you, you're saying it's so important to get yeah. like what you want. If you have a good connection with yeah. the person you're photography, uh, taking yeah. photos of. Well, that's just another thing of like, for me going against industry standards mm-hmm. of like, like why, like why can't I this be my process? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, and like, obviously the more I do it, do photography the better i do get at directing someone that's not a model yeah and but that for me if i don't have a good like relationship or connection mm-hmm. with the model no. we can only get we there's a ceiling we only can get so far exactly there's yeah. this there's a ceiling as far as create creativity wise and mm-hmm. result wise that we'll get um obviously that will increase the more i do this yeah but there's unlimited potential when I have a good connection with the mm-hmm. model and a good, like, even, like, w- the location has a big effect on me, too. Yeah, and the environment so, and everything. Yeah, so my best my best photos come from amazing environments and amazing people that I work with, too. Mm-hmm. And so, and I can still get good photos with someone in, like, a shitty environment. Yeah. And, like, maybe, like, I don't connect that well with the person. Yeah. And, like that kind of photos are getting better the more I do it because that's just practice and yeah. getting your reps in too. That reminds me of, so like I've come to like some form of definition of like happiness of yeah. like like what I like doing and uh, I haven't like fulfilled it yet but it's like doing what you want to do yeah. when you want to do it yeah. with the people who you want to do it with yeah. and that's basically kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, and I think that's why I get so much fulfillment. You know? Yeah. Because with biking it was like I kind of want to do it sometimes. Yeah. I didn't want to do it if it was hot out. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. and like for me I'm like and some people like ask me too like why do you always shoot at the beach mm-hmm. and like why are you always doing so much stuff at the beach I'm like because who doesn't want to hang out at the beach for an hour yeah you know? or more yeah. yeah yeah there's something that uh, looking into the waves like there's so much of unknown like there's yeah. a different world under the sea like yeah. I'll go surfing once in a while and I just like sitting out there yeah. you'll look out there and you're like there's so much unknown and you're so small and the things that you do are so important to you, but they kind of don't mean anything in the whole yeah. universe, you and know? I feel like some people, like, they get that feeling. They're like, oh, this is just a special feeling that I can get every once in a while. But for me, I look at that. I'm like, why can't I just do that all the time? All the time. Yeah. That's why you're out there. And that's photography for me. You know, there's so many people in L.A. too who just, like, don't experience, like, the beach or yeah. you know, the waves or the yeah. water. And, like, it's, it's nature. And yeah. It makes you feel good. Like yeah. if you're, in, I, I mean, you've experienced that in mountain biking too. Like these woods yeah. or these trails, not a lot of people go to it, yeah. dude. 
Not a lot of people go to it. Yeah. And it's beautiful too. There's a different type of beauty. Oh, for sure. You know? Yeah, I've definitely seen everything with like Mother Cross was, you know, middle of Riverside and, <laughs> and San Bernardino and stuff, the desert. Yeah. And then cycling with ski resorts and stuff. Yeah. And then photo is just you try and get photo jam yeah. locations. Yeah. So it's just like it's hard not to be relaxed yeah. and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Before that we close up, I just wanted to talk about like what do you think the importance of doing things that you like? Oh, it's everything. Yeah. It's like I mean, it's because there's so many people out there who just like society teaches them or tells them to like, I don't know, get a finance job or an yeah. office job or something that like pays the bills and like it gets your 401k and that yeah. the the benefits and everything like that. And I've always like ran away from that. Yeah, me you too. Know? And uh it I feel like there's something special in doing something that you're curious about and then getting good at it. Yeah. Though for sure. And like I don't know, for me it's like I don't like I don't try um if, if someone wants to do that, that's cool. Like you do that. You so do you. You do you, bro. Like I'm not I don't care about that. Um people like cuz I essentially dropped out of college. Yeah. Cuz I stopped going and people are like, "Oh, what the heck? You didn't go to college? Like where'd you go to college?" Like you didn't continue like, yeah I'm like, no yeah I'm like oh well good luck i'm like okay thanks <laughs> <laughs> like yeah i mean yeah I, like it's it's hard for me to understand why someone wouldn't want to just do what they love yeah um but then like i don't know i just don't get hung up on like trying to convince people too yeah like if if someone asked me like i guess for family things like uh were your were your parents disappointed they dropped out of school no mm-hmm. no they're they're no. very supportive so that's they're awesome definitely like um they definitely want me to follow my passion and mm-hmm. like, they don't really get in the way but like their their mentality too is like if you're gonna do something do it 100 percent. do it good so like yeah like yeah go for it but you better like don't half-ass it like yeah i don't want to see you like sitting on the couch all the time yeah um but yeah i mean it's i just have so much like inner drive too that like i don't need someone to tell me what to do and stuff like that you know yeah um and i just i obviously like the more mature i get to like the more i'm like i value i think my personal happiness as well yeah but yeah which i feel like a lot of people don't yeah which like it's hard for me to understand because like it's hard for me to put other people myself in other people's shoes i guess Mm. because like i i care about people i'm close with Mm mm-hmm but it's not like they're if someone's not like if someone's miserable, so it doesn't affect me that much too. Yeah. So I'm like, if you want like my help, like come to me. Yeah. But I'm like, like you should do what you hap- what makes you happy. And they're like, no, I don't. I gotta do this and this and stuff. Like, okay. Well, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. That, that, I mean, that's awesome that you do that. Yeah. But like, I guess for me, um, I, I just want to want people to like feel how good sure. it does to do the things that make them yeah like feel alive yeah you know? totally yeah like it's it's definitely like something everyone should experience and like I don't know why more people don't do it yeah um and so but hopefully like and of course like hopefully by maybe I could be an example too sure or like we could be an example yeah like um we all have an effect on people we encounter yeah and if people see we're happy like that we're just genuinely happy they're like they may mm-hmm. add, ask questions and then they may be able to do it too yeah so i don't know like everyone should definitely follow their passion heck I yeah think. all right guys go do shit that you enjoy <laughs> 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 yeah. mr tyler wyman baby yes thank you for having thanks me thanks for coming yeah this was awesome bye y'all see ya